Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry Erasmus and uh, today I'm going to be working on this Japanese black pine in the Niagari style that I've grown from seed. It's the second part in a four part series that I'm doing on these pines. The tree is roughly four years old now, so it'll be going into its fifth growing year. Uh, it's been in this container for two years now. I'm uh, planning on repotting the tree uh, just to revitalize or re-energize the tree, uh, shorten the roots. You need to be careful uh, of allowing the, the roots to become too coarse. And uh, so I'm going to be cutting the roots shorter so that I can generate or, or produce a more fibrous root system. And then at the same time, just to take a, a good look at the tree and see what, uh, what work is more than likely going to be required in the coming growing season. The tree was actually, as I said, was grown from seed and then I made a cutting of the seedling. And then it was planted in a very, very coarse growing medium inside a plastic cylinder uh, and, and then it was left to grow for two seasons in that way. And uh, this is what produced this conglomeration of roots. Uh, obviously that was intentional. I wanted to produce a Niagari style. So this is something that's supposed to suggest a tree that was growing uh, uh, with roots covered with soil that has since been eroded for some other reason, maybe water, flood or whatever it might be, and uh, now the roots are exposed. So this is the style that I'm going for, and uh, so we're going to look at how, uh, I'm going to look at how I'm achieving or if I'm achieving my objective. So the first thing we need to do is get it out of the container, and I'm just going to cut this wire that was used to secure the planting. Just cut that off, and then at the base, just cut this tie-down wire. Actually, we can pull that out. And this side. Now, of course, you're going to have roots all the way up to the wall, the container wall, so it helps to just make a little bit of a groove between the root ball and the container wall and I'm using a sickle to do that with. And this just really just creates a little bit of a gap between the two surfaces, and makes it easier to remove the tree. Yeah, I think the tree is ready to come out of the container now. You can immediately see that the tree is active actively growing, you can see these white tips of the roots. This is a good sign, um, these tips here. And then also this, this whiteness, if you smell it, it smells like a pine forest and this is the mycorrhiza. Uh, mycorrhiza is quite important for the development of pines because it, in, it dramatically increases the surface area of the root system to take up nutrients. So it's a kind of a symbiotic relationship that's, that pines have with their mycorrhiza. And the mycorrhiza is specific to each pine. So there's a different mycorrhiza for a red pine, black pine, and so on. And in fact, this is obviously where mushrooms come from. So I'm going to start preparing the container before I work on the root ball. This just reduces the time that the roots are exposed once they once the media has been removed from them. So you need, want to make sure that you cut a piece of drainage mesh that uh, covers the hole quite uh, generously. And this ensures that growing media doesn't fall through. You're going to be using a piece of aluminium wire. This is a two millimeter, two and a half millimeter wire. Uh, and uh, this is not going to rust. So it's a good idea to use aluminium for this application. And you want to make sure that the wire presses up against the hole, the drainage hole, um, firmly, because otherwise, if it's loose, the the whole the, the mesh can move around, and uh, media may escape from around around the sides. Next, I'm going to put new tie-down wires. So I've got two lengths of aluminum wire, and I'm just gonna give them a good 90 degree bend with the pliers so that they sit flush 
on the bottom of the pot and don't act as any kind of an obstruction when uh, the pot is standing on a flat surface. It's always advisable to wire your trees into the container. Um, there's nothing worse than a wind or something that dislodges them and then uh, the tree lays out in the sun and by the time you see it it's dried out and half dead. So there's my tie down wise. The pot is now prepared. You can if you want to wash the inside of the pot but because I'm using the same container for the same tree uh, it's not really necessary but if you had for instance had if you had root rot uh, or some other root related problem, a pest, root aphids or something, then it would be advisable to first sanitize the interior surfaces of the container using something like a spore kill or any other kind of disinfectant. Okay, I'm going to start by, start working the root ball by cutting this mat of roots that forms at the bottom off, again with my root sickle, uh, because it has little teeth in it. Now with that removed, it'll be much easier to, to work the, the root ball. You can then also use the same tool to just shave off the sides. If you want to, you can keep a little bit of this mycorrhiza, this, this root with mycorrhiza that's, or that's inoculated with mycorrhiza. And uh, when, after you've, well, while you're repotting, you can place this in contact with the roots with the new media and then this will inoculate the soil once again with beneficial micro mycorrhiza. This is a screwdriver that's been ground to a blunt tip and I'm using this kind of like an ice pick just to remove the old growing medium. You can use a, a wooden chopstick as well, uh, just a metal prod does last longer though than a chopstick and so the action is it's actually a, a lot gentler than what it looks like on camera perhaps um, I'm very I'm, I'm holding the the tool quite loosely so if it hits something uh, rigid or solid like a root uh, it's not going to pierce or stab it the action is a stabbing action but I don't want to damage roots unnecessarily so although I'm, I'm holding the tool firmly, it, it can be dislodged. So if I hit a hard surface, it must be able to move through, through your hand. Um, and then the action here of, to remove the media is, is you, 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 you sh uh, stabbing forward and then you're pulling backwards. So you're combing the roots out. You always want roots to radiate from the center point or the, from the trunk to the to a radially outwards. You don't want roots wrapping around in a coil. The roots now exposed. I'm now going to assess the the root distribution. Um, this is very much an aesthetic thing, so it's going to be quite personal. But what I'm looking for is. Uh, a variety of roots, thick and thin, so you have a contrast, and roots should be moving in, in an interesting sort of movement. Uh, they shouldn't just be looped over, kind of like a bow or something. And uh, so I'm going to look through it, and then I'm going to eliminate the roots that I don't want. So obviously this does require that you need to consider what the tree is going to look like in five or ten years from, from now and how these roots are likely to fatten up and fuse with one another and these distances between the roots to become smaller. And this root that's coming out here from the base of the trunk and running down to this point looks a little bit unnatural so just cut, cut that out. And you might find that there's also some dead roots uh, that resulted from maybe the previous repotting. Um, this is a rather odd root here. It makes a very definite kind of an elbow. Um, I'm not sure if I want to cut that out just yet. I think it might add to the interest of the tree. Um, but if I've got something to replace it with, then maybe I can remove it. The plan that I have for this tree is it's not going to be one of those very exposed Neogari styles with a very long 
uh, root uh, kind of a pss, uh, vertical uh, extent of roots. This is going to be a much shorter uh, uh, design and uh, so, so here's my trunk and this will be my first cascading branch and um, so this will be my my first branch the most important branch and then the canopy will sit as a rounded dome in this in this area over here so I need to perhaps need to make uh, some or give some thought as to where the front of the tree is likely to be because that'll also help me to determine what the roots should look like and at the moment I am leaning towards this being the front in looking this way and uh, so then looking at if that's the front then this root that is going back um, and covering the trunk slightly should possibly be eliminated. So I'm going to cut that off. You'll actually see that it has fused with uh, some roots lower down. So I can cut that off at this point. Now that's opened it up a little bit. Um, so you have a much better flow from the trunk onto the roots. Okay, now we're ready to, once you're finished with the root ball, you can put some prepared growing medium into the container. I'm using equal parts of akadama, pumice and lava with a little bit of agricultural carbon. And uh, so I'm making a little bit of a mound on which to locate the tree. It's a little bit too much soil. So take some of that out. Now sometimes if you need to, you, uh, if you need to reposition a root, you can use a little wire, uh, a little wire peg that you can make and I'll show you that in a second. And when you are ready, and you've checked that the planting angle is correct, then you can secure the tree with your tie-down wires. This is important to make sure that the tree doesn't move, uh, is not dislodged by some external force, an animal, the wind, and is knocked out of the container. So I'm just going to secure that. I just want to point out something that I noticed. You can see this, this, all these roots are making a bowed shape and uh, there's a, like an, a hole pass visually that you can see through. So I'm just going to block that off by bringing this root down into this space. So what you're going to do is just use a piece of aluminium wire, the pliers, you're going to give it a little bit of a Fold it back on itself so it acts as a like a shepherd's uh, crook, uh, the crook on a shepherd's stick, and then uh, have a, a length of wire to the other side. And then now you're going to bring the root down that you need to move, and you're going to push that down and anchor it in in a better position, and this will hopefully cover this hole. And lastly, we're going, I'm going to fill up the rest of the container with new media. And then I'm going to use a chopstick just to work the media into any holes or cavities, gaps between the roots. This is very important because roots will not develop into a void. Once you've used your chopstick to get media into all those voids. You can just tamp down the media, uh, just really settling it into position. 
and this also makes there's another further step in making sure that there's no cavities uh, where media is not sitting. Um, I'm using the, the reverse side of a rake. Finished repotting the tree now and the next step will be to thoroughly wet it. I want to do that with a very fine uh, spray and make sure that I wait until or keep watering until the water runs clear from the, the bottom of the container then I know it's washed out or rinsed out the dust that is in the system. So the tree has been thoroughly watered and uh, now just quickly run through what my intentions are for the growing season ahead. Um, obviously this tree is going to be much smaller. This is an escape branch or a sacrifice branch. So this is used to fatten up the, the base of the tree, fatten up the roots. And uh, so it's pretty close to, to have uh, done its job. Maybe another season's growth. Uh, I'll just, it really just depends on how much it thickens at the trunk and if, it, if it's then thick enough for the design, design that I have in mind for it. But then as it gets closer to that point, so in other words, if, I have not, if I'm now happy with the trunk girth, uh, I need to start transitioning from the sap flow, which is quite dramatic, going into the sacrifice branch, into a new sacrifice or into a new leader um, in this lower area. And uh, that is not, it's not advisable to do that in a single season. And so the idea would be to start reducing the sap flow to the leader and you can do that by reducing the amount of needles and eventually you actually carve into the base. So perhaps in the first growing season when I start to or when I first start to reduce the sap flow to the sacrifice branch, I'll just reduce the amount of needles dramatically to that area. Uh, and then in the second season, I will carve, at the, uh, carve away at the base of it, almost as if I was going to be doing an air layering. Um, and then that will reduce the sap flow even further. And then at the beginning of the third season, I can eliminate it. But this, in, in the interim, uh, sap will be transferred or energy will be transferred to a new leader. And obviously I need to select one of those in, in this area. The other thing that I will be looking at doing during the growing season is these branches lower down on the tree. Uh, they will be they will be used for the future structure of of the of the of the tree itself and uh, so I need to make sure that I keep these buds uh, healthy in the lower area and uh, in order to do that I need to remove some needles or cut needles shorter as well and uh, to start decandling this area to start uh, pushing sap into that space and obviously when I start transitioning over from the sacrifice branch more and more energy will be going into these lower branches. So thanks very much for watching the second part in this four-part series. I hope you'll catch me again for the third part and uh, that'll be pr uh, uploaded one Friday soon and uh, so uh, if you haven't uh, done so already please do like and subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell and then you'll be notified when i upload the next video which is usually every friday so until next time thanks very much for watching take care goodbye